Good morning and welcome to day two of our Advent Food for Thought. My name is Pastor Clint Lang with Hillside Community Church in 100 Mile House. Welcome to everyone who's joining us this morning. Uh, we're starting into daily devotionals, so if you are here for the first time uh, for the next number of days leading up to Christmas, we're going to be doing Foods for Thought um, Advent Edition. And um, today is the second day of Advent celebration as we reflect on what Christmas brings to us. And the theme of our week is that of the hope that Jesus brings. Today we look to Isaiah 28, 16, which is a prophecy where the prophet Isaiah speaks concerning the Messiah to come. God spoke through Isaiah when he said this, he said, So this is what the Sovereign Lord says. See, I lay a stone in Zion, a tested stone, a precious cornerstone for a sure foundation. The one who relies on it will never be stricken with panic. What a powerful word of prophecy concerning the incarnation of the Messiah. In today's world, many people are panicking about the things that are taking place around them. We see it. Things that we don't understand are happening it seems like all over the place, all over the whole planet. But I, I want you to know today that Jesus Christ was sent to us as a cornerstone of stability. And God foreknew that there were going to be troubled times, in particular in the last days. There has been prophecy given in the New Testament that says there will be perilous times in the last days. God knew that people needed a stable place to plant their feet. And Zechariah, the prophet, like Isaiah, prophesied about the coming of the Messiah, saying that the Messiah to come would both be a living branch and a stone. When we look into this prophecy in Zechariah chapter 3, we're ushered into a scene where the high priest Joshua is observing what God is planning on doing in the future of the world. The high priest ministers, as we know, in the temple of the Most High God. In a temple before the New Testament time, in a temple made by the hands of men. So here we have this priest observing what God was about to do. And in this scene, the high priest Joshua is shown the coming Messiah would become the foundation of a new temple that would not be made with the hands of men, but would be established with the solid foundation of stone on the living God, depicted as both a branch who would bring life and a stone who would bring stability. Zechariah chapter 3, verses 8 and 9 says, Listen, high priest Joshua, you and your associates seated before you, who are men symbolic of things to come, I am going to bring my servant, the branch. See the stone I have set in front of Joshua. There are seven eyes on that stone, and I will engrave an inscription on it, says the Lord Almighty, and I will remove the sin of the land in a single day. And we see the fulfillment of this prophecy with the son of David, the one who would come, Jesus Christ, the Savior, who was born in Bethlehem on that first Christmas day. Jesus, God the Son, was prophesied to be the living branch, rooted in the house and lineage of King David. Isaiah chapter 11, verses 1 and 2 tells us, A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. The Spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and of might the spirit of knowledge, and the fear of the Lord. You see, my friends, there is great hope in this. When Jesus came into the world, he came as the cornerstone of a new temple, made by the hands of God, not by the hands of men. Jesus, or as the Hebrews call him, Yeshua, the cornerstone would be different than all of the other cornerstones 
and a temple made by the hands of men. This cornerstone of the new temple would be alive. He would be known as God in the flesh. As the cornerstone, Zechariah pictures him as a stone which is engraved. And the Lord Almighty has engraved the stone and has put seven eyes into the stone, has set seven eyes into the stone which represent the fullness of God. Seven always represents the fullness of God. The seven eyes represents God seeing all things past, present, future. God understanding all things past, present, and future. God being in control of all things past, present, and future. This stone was a living stone. And Jesus, we see, would be the living stone. And he would remove the sins of the world in a single day when in the future the Messiah would pay the price for the sins of the world. Zechariah the prophet speaks of this and outlines this. In a turbulent world filled with uncertainty, the coming of Jesus into the world would bring life as a branch brings life and bears fruit and stability to whoever places their trust in him. We don't need to worry about tomorrow, my friends. We can live from day to day. There are many things in this life that we do not understand, but we know who holds the future of all things, and we know who holds our hand through it all. I will end the today's food for thought with a scripture from Ephesians chapter 2, 19 to 22, speaking of the fulfillment of what God has promised in hope for the future through his chosen Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. We can live in this hope presently because of Christmas. The Apostle Paul writes, Now therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building, being fitted together, grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are also being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. Would you pray with me? Jesus, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for the stability that is in you and that those who place your trust, their trust in you do not have to be afraid about tomorrow. We don't have to be filled with panic as the world panics around us when the foundations of things crumble because you, O oh Lord, are the chief cornerstone. We thank you, Lord, that you prophesied this hundreds of years before you were incarnated in the flesh and came to us as the branch, as the living stone. Lord, we thank you for establishing your church and taking your temple and moving it into the hearts of men. A temple not made by the hands of men, but made by the eternal God and established by the eternal God who sees all things, who knows all things. And we thank you, O Father, for this day. And I pray that you would bless each person that's watching this broadcast. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I pray that you have a wonderful day.